what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the uh, review process, how, how we go about reviewing an item. For item writers, it works the same way. The same thought process works, just obviously in reverse. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to build a better item. And when we, when we review items, we're going to be looking for, are these constructed correctly and how can we improve them? Are they, are they good to go? And while we're going to be focusing on multiple choice questions, the same thought process works as well for the SIC, the semi-interactive console items, or the hotspot items. So let's first talk about the bits and pieces of the item so we can we get the, the, uh, the words down. The first thing we're going to talk about is what we call the stem. Now that in a multiple choice question, that is a question. It has a, a question mark at the end of the complete sentence. And it's not an incomplete sentence, it's not a fill in the blank, it's not a, a uh, uh, anything like that. So the stem is, think of it as the stimulus, the thing that the candidate is reading and is asking the, the uh, question for them to respond to. A good stem is one that you can answer without even seeing the answer choices. If you were to cover up the answer choices and just read the stem, the idea is that the candidate should be able to think in their mind Here's what I think, where I think this is going. If I ask you the color of the sky, you would think blue, and then you would look down the answer choice list and find blue. That's the thought process that we want a candidate to go through. So in order for that to happen, the STEM has to lead you, and it has to tell you where, what, what it's looking for. Is it looking for a disease? Is it looking for uh, something, something else? Is it looking at an image? So it has to, it has to direct you in that fashion. We do not want to use stems that would say which of the following is true. Obviously you have no idea where that's going. And essentially what you'd have to do is reach each answer choice and say is that true? Is that true? Is that true? So that's essentially a four choice true false question. There are four true false statements you have to read each one. That would be a bad form. We don't want to do that. The other thing about a good item, a good stem, is it addresses a single issue that's important for competent practice. I often hear people say, oh, we learned that in school, or everyone should know that they should have learned that in school. That's great. You learn a lot of good things in school. Not all of it is needed for competent practice. Some things you learn may be nice to know, but do you need to know it to be able to practice? Would you be less competent as a sonographer if you didn't know this information? That's what we're looking for. Here's a pretty well-formed question. What quality control tests would be evaluated to determine axial resolution? So you know that all the answer choices are going to be quality control tests. So in your mind, you're thinking of what are the different quality control tests I might use on a sonogram system. If there's an image, we let them know that there's an image to look at. The, the test evolves, the technology evolves. Sometimes the item pops up in front of them, sometimes it has to be clicked on, you have to click on the image uh, uh, button or something like that. But in any case, we just want to make sure that uh, we tell the candidate there is an image. What is the most likely pathology indicated in this image? That's a pretty simple rule. Okay, so bad examples would be incomplete sentences, sentence with blanks, we don't do that. A STEM that teaches or preaches. I understand that, you know, sonography is a very important profession. It's important to you. You may believe that it's the greatest profession in the world. We don't need to say that in the STEM. We can get right to the issue. Uh, you'll see STEM sometimes that go on and on and on. It's like a whole paragraph of the history of the world. And then it gets down to the question, what's the color of the sky? So we can get rid of all that other stuff. We go right to focus on what do the candidates need to know in order to answer the question? Perhaps one of the most important things I'm going to say is that we want to make sure that the question is not trivial. We want to ask, we want to make sure that it does pass the who cares test. If you were going to say, okay, yeah, that's true. That's something I learned. It's not something I need to know in order to practice. Does, does anyone care that the candidate knows that? Compared to the fact that you, you're in a situation where you're hiring somebody, you only have a limited number of questions to ask them, would you pick this question or would it be the kind of thing that would be last on your list? Okay, we want the things that'd be first on your list. Very important to ask.